Good day and welcome to Giza Voice. Today we will discuss the performance of a fixed resistive heating element versus that of a variable resistive heating element with a MPPT. The orientation and inclination of your photovoltaic panels is absolutely very important. Panels should be facing north at an angle of approximately 30 degrees pitch. We will now look at the annual energy production on a 1.2 kilowatt PV array, a fixed resistance 4 kilowatt element versus a variable resistance element with MPPT. Without the MPPT, we will notice below what energy production will be achieved. And with an MPPT and a variable resistance heating element, the energy production being achieved with panels facing in different directions. Here we have a bit of a system overview of the GeezerWise PV water heating system. The GeezerWise PV water heating system incorporate a MPPT controller and the purpose of the MPPT controller is to achieve maximum power point of the panel output at any particular time. Furthermore, it incorporates an AC-DC element which is totally electrically isolated from one another, which in effect means that AC and DC can run simultaneously. Gizawas also offer a dual MPPT and you will have your PV input as we can see here. You will have an output to water heater number one. Once water heater number one reaches its desired and set temperature, it will automatically switch over to water heater number two. Here we have a standard resistive heating element and water heaters in South Africa is either supplied with a 2 kilowatt, a 3 kilowatt or a 4 kilowatt element. On this slide over here, we will illustrate the value of a maximum power point tracker in combination with a variable resistive heating element. And from this here, we can see that with a maximum power point tracker and the resistive heating element, we will always obtain maximum power from that PV array. Whereas with a fixed resistive heating element, depending on the resistance, we will get different results, resulting in the PV array underachieving um, throughout the day and as weather conditions may change from cloudy, overcast, whatever the case may be, that will surely change the behavior of the resistive heating elements. So in other words, in order to achieve the full potential of a water heater with a fixed resistive heating element from your PV array, this will mean that you will have to fit your water heater with approximately four to five different water heating elements with different resistances and a complicated switching mechanism that would switch between the different elements in different weather conditions. On this slide here, we have the solar irradiation values for the 1st of March and then also for the 2nd of March. And during the next two slides, we will illustrate the effect of the resistance heating elements versus the variable resistance heating element with the MPPT. During this day, we had overcast cloudy conditions. And from this, you will observe that the, during those conditions, the geyser wise with a variable resistive heating element actually outperformed all of the others by far. 
at about 11.30 the sun broke and we can see that the 4 kilowatt element performed slightly better than the 3 and the 2 kilowatt element and for the purpose of doing our calculations at the end we decided to go for the 4 kilowatt element because the 4 kilowatt element seemed to be performing best um, compared to the 2 and the 3 kilowatt element with this array. Now if you look at the cumulative energy production for the day, geyser wise with the variable resistive element and the MPPT outperformed the 2, 3 and 4 kilowatt fixed resistive elements by far. On this particular day, we had heavy overcast cloudy conditions and once again if we look at the performance of the geyser wise with the MPPT, at some stages the sun broke a little bit and looking at the comparisons geyser wise with the MPPT and the variable resistive heating element performed well above any of the other um, fixed resistive heating elements. Once again, if we look at the cumulative energy performance for a particular day and the output, it's remarkable that the geyser wise outperformed any of these other resistive heating elements by far. Over here testing was done and the solar radiation for this was extremely well at 8.2 kilowatt hours per square meter and um, from the next slides we will compare the um, energy output once again with your fixed resistive heating elements. Now with an excellent day and energy production for the day we will notice here that early morning the geyser wise outperformed any of these other elements Slightly later, the 3 kilowatt element or the 2 kilowatt element uh, performed fairly well, although the 3 kilowatt and the 4 kilowatt element still stayed below the norm. As the time went on during the morning, we can see the comparative um, performance of the different elements over here. And by about 11, when the sun was at peak, the 4 kilowatt element started performing at a better ratio as whereas the 2 kilowatt and the 3 kilowatt element um, output was fairly low. Now once again we will observe from this chart that in the early morning the 4 kilowatt element uh, performed uh, fairly low compared to that of the geyser wise and the 2 kilowatt element and the similar sort of occurrence um, takes place in the afternoon as the sun moves over. Now once again if we look at the cumulative energy production for the day the geyser wise with the variable resistive heating element outperformed any of the um, other elements um, that was used during the testing. Now if we look at the annual solar yield, a 1.2 kilowatt PV array, a geyser wise MPPT and a variable resistor, your annual energy output will be in the region of 2186 kilowatt hours. Compared to a fixed 4 kilowatt resistive heating element, annual output 1561 kilowatt hours and this will even be worse when using a 2 and a 3 kilowatt element on the same PV array. Thank you for watching. We trust you find this information of value when selecting your PV water heating system.